Hey everybody, it's Ryan Fontenot here and welcome to the One Million Cent Podcast. I am so excited you're here today because on this podcast, we take time to make sure that you are equipped, encouraged, and inspired to share your faith in everyday life like never before. We do that a couple of ways. You'll know I'll have episodes where I'm on by myself just dropping tips and tricks and techniques on how to maybe start a conversation with Jesus or stir up your heart for Christ. But then on episodes like today, I bring other men and women of faith on here with me where you can hear hear from the real experts, where you can get encouraged from other voices that are out there seeing God move. And so today, I am excited and I am delighted to have my friend on here, Chris Trent, all the way from the great state of Georgia. Chris, what's going on, my brother? Man, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on, man. I love this. Such an honor uh, to be a part of this and thankful for your group of people to listen, man. Keep up the great hey, work, dude. It's awesome. Hey, well, thank you, man. You're such a, an encouragement. And every time I'm around you, man, I laugh a lot and I'm encouraged. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Chris Trent uh, is in student ministry for a long time. I'm going to get him to share his complete bio. Well, maybe not your complete bio, but oh, your yeah, snapshots yeah. for us coming up here in just a <laughs> second. But uh, we first met at Conclave a couple years ago and, um, he walks up, pulls out a magic trick out of his pocket, starts talking. I'm like, this is, do you remember that? The coin yeah, trick? You like, could. <laughs> yeah. do you probably have it in your pocket right now. It's a now, nerdy right? hobby, but it's uh, hey. it's been helpful over the years with teenagers. It I is, it is, yeah. man. It's a great conversation starter. So Chris, tell everybody, man, where you're at, what you're doing, man. Give us that short snapshot yeah. bio for us. Yeah, so about two years ago, I left the, 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 the local church. I served at Johnson Ferry Baptist for like 17 years. For a lot of those years, I was the middle school pastor. Uh, but then towards the end, um, uh, the last three or so years, uh, I served as the student pastor and was able to lead the team there. So that was awesome. Got to lead through a lot of COVID. That was a blast. Party. Yeah, was- you know, so. <laughs> <Good night. laughs> but uh, but about two years ago, I started working for the Georgia Baptist Mission Board. Uh, got a weird title. It's the Next Gen Catalyst. Basically, that means I direct our next gen ministries in the state. We exist for the purpose of just coming alongside churches and strengthening them. Uh, so all of the Southern Baptist churches in Georgia, we love to come alongside yeah. this, but we'll, I help anybody, honestly, but you know, that's right. uh, yeah, for real, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. uh, but that's what I do now. So I've got some great folks that I work with. Uh, we do a few events each year where we bring teenagers in, but we focus on training and focus on investing. Uh, so man, I, I love getting, getting to do what I'm doing now. Man, and you are a blessing in doing that. And uh, I love your heart on, hey, you know, we help anybody. I, you real. and I know, you, you you know all the state guys. Um, I don't know all of them, but I know a lot of them. And I think that's the heart of every guy that I know that works for a state convention. It's like, yeah. hey, yeah, our focus is this state, but we know this, man. We reach our state to impact the world. And so anyway, we can do that. So thanks for what you're doing. He also hosts his very own podcast, which I'm going to have him tease out more later on. Yeah, but it let's a, go. It's a podcast that this is, man, I love this more than I can even express right now. It's a podcast aimed at the youth volunteer, right? Those that volunteer in student ministry. Is that correct? That is it, man. Yeah. I want to encourage you to listen in because he's going to share more about that later. And they have some incredible I mean, incredible tools, incredible uh, things to share with you there. So, Chris, before we jump into too much, though, let's let's start here, man. Let's start with some rapid fire questions. Get all us right, warmed up a little bit. We don't want to pull a muscle. Let, let's let's get warmed up. First of all, number one, are you a coffee guy or are you an energy drink guy? Which one are you, bro? That would be coffee, my friend. Oh, Drinking there some it coffee is. this morning out of my Disney <laughs> bug. My son works at Disney World, so I'm all really? in. Really? You know? uh, oh, yeah. yeah. He drives a truck for Kilimanjaro go. Safari. Hey, so, come on, somebody. Cool. All right. That is, that, yeah, yeah. But I'm a coffee guy, man. I'm all in. I, I will be honest, though. I'm just kind of a four cup Mr. Coffee kind of guy. Okay. Okay. You I was know, wondering. So I like I a fancy wondering. fruit. I, mean, I, I like a little fruit every once in a while, but yeah. just simple coffee, man. That was my next question. Are you a coffee snob? Is really the next question. Mm, so it's more I'm of a, a big caffeine fan of the delivery. Keurig, so I'm a little snobbish, but yeah, okay. it's all good. Okay. Yep. That's fair. That's fair, man. All right. Well, having said that, do you consider yourself like your sweet spot, your sweet time of the day, morning, midday, night out? Which one are you? Yeah, I'm probably more of a uh, midday kind of guy. Like okay. the morning, morning, not so much. The late okay. night, I tend to just like the veg and watch. I'm I'm really gifted right. in the area. If you, I take a spiritual gift of watching TV, like let's it's go. A spiritual gift for me. 
uh, I can stop. I, I really turn off things pretty, pretty well. Uh, oh, midday yeah. is when I get most of my, okay. you know, productive productivity done for sure. I like that, man. I like that. Well, um, I know being in the state of Georgia now working for the state, you travel a lot, but if you're just traveling, would you prefer yes. to drive, enjoy the journey, see the scenery? Are you a fly guy? Let's get to the destination. I want to be there. Yeah, I think I'm more of a fly guy. Honestly, I do have to, part of my job now is definitely driving all over Georgia. Yes. I've been blessed to see all kinds of little small Georgia towns, you know, and mm -hmm. that's been a lot of fun. But, uh, if I'm just going for fun and on a journey, uh, man, I, I yeah. love flying and getting somewhere. It's great. Okay, awesome, man. I love that. Well, when it comes to seasons of the year, winter, spring, summer, fall, maybe George, Georgia may get them all. I don't know. Texas, we get we we get about one and a half. So what what's your favorite season of the year, man? Yeah, I'm kind of a summer guy. I mean, I love okay. the beach. I love yes. getting out. And uh, yeah, I'm all in on the summer for real. It gets a little okay. hot, well you know, for sure. But <laughs> In Texas, <laughs> I lived right. in Texas for a long time. I was yeah. in Texas for like 11 years, and it gets real hot yeah. in Texas. It gets warm. It but, gets warm. Yeah, it does. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that does answer maybe my next question. Are you a beach guy or a mountain guy? Where would you prefer destination? All in destination? on beach, man. Mountains let's are great, go. beautiful. Don't mind yeah. every once in a while, but beach. Beach all the let's way. Let's go. I love that, man. I love that. Well, when it comes to dessert, I know when you travel in all these small towns, man, you'd be hitting up some great restaurants and stuff. So, But when it comes to dessert, are you a pie guy, a cake guy, or I'm going to throw another option in here. Let's go. Because I just had to start, or an ice cream guy. Which one are you? Oh, that that complicates it because I had I an know. answer. <laughs> I had an answer. I know, I'm a big I know. fan of the cheesecake. And I was, because, you know, it feels okay. like it's a pie, but Ooh. it also feels, but it's called cheesecake. Oh. It so is. who knows what, you know, wherever that falls in that, I'm a big fan of cheesecake, mm, uh, mm. but I'd, I'd love cheesecake. I love, I love ice cream, man. I'm a huge okay. fan of ice cream. So you uh, have a favorite uh, ice cream brand? Yeah. I, Bluebell, you know, Bluebell. Bluebell. I mean, all those years of Texas and that, now yeah. we can get it here, of course. So you can, uh, just all right. homemade ice cream, man. Uh, yes, the homemade version. Yes. I love it. There yeah. you go, man. That's all. Well, uh, let's maybe get a little bit more spiritual here when it comes let's to the it. Bible. And I know the Jesus answer is both, but when it comes to the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, what, where, where do you kind of land? For the record, you're talking to a guy who will tell you which of my two kids is my favorite, so I don't mind Come picking on. the Old Testament or Let's New Testament. Go. I'm like all in, you know. So, uh, you know, honestly, I, I think if, if I think about that, I haven't thought about it hard, but honestly, I probably love teaching Old Testament more mm. than – more than I, I just – I love a yeah. story. I love being able yeah. to teach and unpack – and dig yeah. deep all of this. So I think I'm old Testament, man. I love that, man. I love hey, I, that's fair. Well, as we know, the old Testament does point to the new Testament, the prophecies, the fulfillment of Jesus coming, all these things. And so sure. speaking of the new Testament, when it comes to the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all write the same account, a little bit different. Um, so what, who's your go-to guy? Who's your boy? Who you're rolling with? Matthew, Mark, I think Luke, I find John. myself in Luke, Luke most of the time. You know, All I right. feel like I tend to lean always Luke. I feel like I've taught more out of Luke than the other ones for some reason, you know. So yeah. uh, I don't really know the theological reason why that's my Man. leaning, but uh, but that's hey. where I tend to land. You know, I have, I have a theory that um, depending on who you kind of lean toward probably determines your personality style a little bit. So I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So <laughs> It's kind of like, who, who do I like the way they tell the story? So that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, well, last question before we jump into the real stuff here is the question that I don't want you to answer right now, uh, yep. but I do want you to think about it. Um, and that is this, is Chris Trent, is he a dog guy or is he a cat guy? Now don't answer that. Um, and, uh, and here's what I'd love for you to do. If you happen to be listening or watching in a place where you can type an answer, why don't you drop in the comments? What do you think? Look at him right now. Look at this face, man. Look, look at the hair. I'm going to answer look like the... Jesus would answer just so you know. I, uh Oh, I have no idea Dropping what that means. Truth but... bombs. Just get uh, ready. Hang on to get the end. ready. You want to hang on to the end, but let us know. <laughs> do you think our boy Chris is a dog guy or a cat guy? Well, well, Chris, uh, thanks for being on here, man. And I know you kind of shared a little bit about what you're doing with the Georgia Baptist Convention. But listening here are some teenagers and some of them, um, you know, they may be feeling this call to ministry or they're an yeah. adult um, and they're feeling a call to ministry. And they're wondering how in the world did Chris get to, did he say he works for the state convention? Some of them don't yeah, even know what that, that is. Yeah. But how in the world did you get into student ministry, get into the convention? Uh, maybe just some quick snapshots of, man, I met Jesus here. Here's a call to ministry. Yeah. Here's some step, big milestones along the way. What happened there? 
Yeah, you know, one of the things I say often is I'm a product of youth ministry. Um, and okay. obviously I'm a product of Jesus' grace, you know, but yes. what I mean by that is, man, I'm, I'm a kid that t- all through high school, towards the end of my junior year, my, my parents divorced the middle school. Okay. I was completely unchurched uh, up until the end of my junior year. Uh, definitely did, you know, that, that divorce left the whole uh, kind of there in my heart, if you will, in my life. So I tried to do the things that a lot of people would try to do, popularity, mm-hmm. getting involved, friends, all that stuff. But none of that, none of that worked right so at yeah. the end of my junior year of high school a youth pastor in the little town uh, i lived in crestview florida i didn't really know him very well but he invited me to youth camp i didn't even know what church youth camp was i had never wow. been to anything like that in my life so this is like 1987 i'm 52 now so i don't mind saying that you know like let's go uh so so sure enough man i uh, i found myself all of a sudden at ridgecrest north carolina uh, at a centrifuge what used to be called centrifuge they call it fuge now <laughs> That's a, a camp. big camp, bro. <laughs> yeah, right? So I'm there, man, and all of a sudden I realized that, yeah, even though I grew up in the South, and if you grow up in the South, you, you hear about Jesus, right? Yeah. You know, or maybe you've attended a VBS every once in a while or whatever, you know. And uh, But honestly, I realized it just per- made perfect sense that even though I'd heard about Jesus, I'd never really trusted Jesus. Yeah. I never yeah, made that decision to follow Jesus and to accept that forgiveness that he offered. So honestly, mm-hmm. it was that week just sitting in my bunk bed one morning, and that's really what was awesome for me was, I mean, it was literally weeks or months after that, that I just looked at my youth pastor and I was like, I want to do what you do. And Come that was on, really man. the heart of my calling, you know, and it wasn't mm. so much that I understood. Cause honestly, I didn't even know you could work for the church and get paid. Right. You know, <laughs> like right. I, didn't know yeah. that was a, I didn't even know that was a yeah. thing. Some people yeah, are some still going, wait, 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 you going, get paid. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you about? yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so man, I just looked at it. He took me to a Bible college, you know, introduced me there mm. to a recruiter and I ended up going to university of mobile. And, and for wow. me, what ended up happening was I immediately just started getting plugged into church working in youth ministry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so that started off as like an internship for a church that led to me eventually going to seminary, working on my master's and, mm. you know, doing that thing. I squeezed my master's into nine years. I don't Ooh, want to make way to go, man. I know it sounds like a brag. I want to say that, you know, I try not to say it often. I don't want to make, I have a nine year master degree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So, uh, so yeah, but all of that led to, you know, ultimately doing youth ministry where I took my first church on my own, uh, you know, and served there in Texas for eight years and then ended up here uh, in Atlanta, you know, so in some way or another, I've been involved in youth ministry for like 30 plus years and mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, it's, it, my kids grew up in it. They loved it. Uh, my wife is a huge yeah. part of what I do. And, uh, but now getting to take that, you know, experience, if you will, whatever you'd call that age, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, um, man. and, and, and Wisdom. helping younger guys, that's a, that's a big part of my journey now. So it's awesome. Oh man, that's so good. I love, thanks for sharing that as well. I'm curious because I yep. don't know that you said this, but I'm super curious. You said a youth pastor invited you to student camp. How was that connection made between you and, and the youth pastor? How did y'all know each other? Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great question. Truthfully, I was dating a girl that went, that was in his youth group. Yeah. There you go. So, so, you know, it's, so she, we don't recommend missionary dating like at all. <laughs> like that's not, you know, that's not a good idea, but, and, and I don't, you don't think that was necessarily her intention by any nah, means, but, no. uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, so he knew of me and I, I was pretty involved in the high school, you know, and doing a bunch yeah. of stuff. So okay. we'd run into each other, you know, at different yeah. things. And that's awesome because I'm always curious about that because, um, you know, my, kind of my story. I grew up in church, was out for a little bit, but as uh, my youth, the youth pastor that led me to Jesus came to my door because my cousin said, sent him, you know, my cousin was like, Hey, you need to, you need to go get my, my cousin. Right. And so I'm super thankful for Tara sending him to my door. And I remember him coming this day to my door. And I told my mom when, when I saw him roll, I was like, Hey, tell him I'm not here. And he rang the door and he said, Hey, is Ryan here? She goes, yeah, he's back hiding in his bedroom. And she sent him back there. (laughs) So That's awesome, man. That's so, awesome. so the the, yeah. the whole point is this, man. It took it took one 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 girl, right? Probably invited you to church. You wanted to be with her. Probably yeah. had nothing to do in your mind with the sure. Lord. But there was a the, the the point is there's a relationship there, and I think we see this a lot. That hey, it's it, there's a relational connection, and those that are in Christ have have relationships around them of people who don't know Christ. Yes. And that's what this podcast is about, man. It's about going, okay, how yeah. can I leverage my life 
to lead others to the Lord. You are a product of someone, whether we call it missionary sure. dating or not, right? Well, I, by the way, we don't condone that as well. That's not something we would push. Yeah, but the record. my point yeah. is this, is, hey, if you have a friend that doesn't know Jesus, invite them to church with you because you never know you what never God's going to do in that moment. So, so Chris, I know this. Um, as can, you were in me, student, Can I add one thing yeah, go real quick? Though? You know, please, the story, yes. By the way, biblically, the story that I always reference there too is the story whenever the uh, paralytic and his four friends yeah. You know this story, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things it, yeah. I've said, I've, I've taught that to teenagers before. And one of the things I like to say about that story specifically is, you know, here they have a friend that's a paralytic. Yeah. And there's a lot of different ways they could have helped him. They could yeah. have made life easier for him. They could have done all these different things because he had a need. Man, when I think back yeah. to my, you know, I was broken because my family was broken, you know? Yeah. And there were a that's lot good. of people that did nice things to me. But the mm -hmm. biggest thing that made a difference in my life was when my youth pastor took me to Jesus, right? Come on. And the, come on. And the biggest thing that, I like, honestly, the paralytic, his four friends, of all the things they could have done, they took him to Jesus. Yeah. And that's what yeah, made man. the biggest difference for him, you know? And so um, I, I think that's just huge, man. So, yeah. That's it, man. I love, we're going to preach a sermon right here. I love Let's this, go. though. But that, that's it, man. You got two preachers on here. It might get, it might get crazy. Might but, get but, but, I, but I think that's the real, the real fact, right? Here's, here's what I see in that story, too, is, right, what they do, they just got him in the room. They just got him in the room where Jesus was. Jesus handled and, the rest. Yeah, yes, exactly. And now I do now, think it's also I, interesting in that story, by the way. You know there has to be a moment <laughs> where, where – they do all that work to get him down in there. And if you've not, yeah. by the way, if you're listening and you've never read the story, you got to go look it up. Yes, uh, yes, but, yes, uh, yes. Uh, but, man, they get him down. They do all that work. And the first thing Jesus says was, your sins are forgiven. And I've always thought that the paralytic and the, or the four friends have to be looking at each other going, that's kind of not why we brought him here. Like, that's great and all, but we were really hoping you would heal him. We've heard, you know. <laughs> You know, I mean, I know it sounds unspiritual, but or, honestly. or maybe, or maybe in that moment, I get the picture of like when somebody, you know, the speaker, oh, John, we need you in the principal's office. Yeah. I feel like in that moment and everybody goes, Ooh, <laughs> yeah. it's like your sins are forgiven. Everybody goes, Oh, oh he knows. <laughs> you thought you were going to get healed. <laughs> so, oh man, oh, sorry. Man. We digress. We digress, yeah. but that's so true. And, and part of this, I know we want to encourage you to open up your mouth and share the gospel, but honestly, every bit of it is, is, is part of seeing someone come to Christ. There's the, that you see them. There's yes. this invitation there that, not, I would say like this, it's not every day that you share the gospel with somebody the first time and they're like, all right, I'm in. It's yes. usually yeah. some relational equity along the way. They've watched you. They've been invested in by yeah. you. And so there was some reason you said, yeah, I'll go to this camp, you know, uh, with you. You had no idea what God was going to do. And so, Chris, let's say this. You've been in student ministry a long time, been around students for a long time. And I know there are students, their parents, their leaders watching this going, man, I want to be part of bringing my friend to Jesus. But how do I start? If somebody said that yeah. to you, what is maybe a first one or two steps you would say, hey, you want to start? Here, here's a great place to start. Yeah. You know, one thing I'm, I, I like to chat when I talk to teenagers and even adults and parents that are trying to even disciple their kids, right? I, I think it starts with an authentic walk yourself. Right now, yeah. don't get me wrong. I think Jesus can work around that, uh, you know, uh, so I'm not saying it depends Amen. on you. Yeah. Um, but what I am saying is this. If you're going to try to share how big of a difference Jesus can make in somebody's life, he probably needs to be making a difference in your life. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not talking yep. about perfection here. Right. But like, it, you know, when, when, when I think of the like, man, if you've got a you've got a friend that's really struggling in need and you hear the story of the paralytic and his four friends and you're like man i need to take my kid my friend to jesus and talk about how jesus can make a difference in that kid's life mm -hmm. uh, or my friend's life yeah well jesus needs to be making a difference in your life right so i think it starts with just man allowing that to be an authentic walk so it's not a check a box kind of thing but rather it's a man i've got to walk with jesus myself and he's he's meeting my needs uh it, you know on, on so many levels uh but in that i think it it's somehow getting to a point where you're normalizing your conversation about God and about Jesus. Yeah. For some reason, it feels like a lot of times 
talking about God and talking about Jesus is just not part of our normal conversation, right? So if we can get to a place where we're normalizing that, I'm not mm. saying make it cheesy or or make it some kind of fake production, but I'm right. talking about out of that authentic walk, mm. you know, like, man, I'm praying yeah. this, I'm blessed this way. Yeah. My son's been blessed down at Disney, you know, and mm-hmm. I, he said something recently, you know, I love when your kids get to a place where they're teaching you instead, you know, <laughs> uh, Amen. and, and he, he's got a couple promotion type things or whatever, you know, and he says, what I like to tell my friends is I'm not lucky. I'm blessed. Mm. And I'm like, man, that that's a huge, like, you know, that's allowing that to be authentic and become part of your normal conversation, you know? Yeah. So when yeah. I think about a kid in high school, you know, like, man, just, starting to have just basic conversations about right. it, making it normal and it'll it'll be it'll get to where it's a whole lot easier for sure gosh i love that man that's so so good and listen as you're listening to chris share that some of you were listening going oh i need to share oh man and as he was talking you thought about someone who needed to hear this because maybe it's a conversation you just had with them the other day can i just tell you this right now share this with them like like send this podcast episode to them so that i promise you if that hits you and you're like, Ooh, I need yeah. I need to share that with so-and-so that's the Lord doing that. So share that out with them. Chris, I, I love two things there. Number one is just, Hey, walk with the Lord, like daily walk with the Lord. And as we daily walk with yeah. the Lord, Huge. talking about the Lord becomes more normal. And I do. That's one thing I, 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 I really have a passion about is just making uh, witnessing normal again, making evangelism normal again. It ought to be a normal part of our yeah. life to talk about the Lord. Um, and I love what you said, just super practical. Hey, man, oh, man, good, man, you got lucky, man. You got that promotion. And and him just saying, nah, man, I'm not lucky. I, I'm blessed. Yeah. That's seed planting right there. It is. That's seed planting right there. Yep. I love it, man. I was thinking about, um, and, and we can nuance this out one day, but I think that's witnessing that leads to evangelism. What do you think about that right there? That's witnessing, right? So when we drop these little nuggets, that's being a witness, being a light that will lead you to an opportunity to evangelize because we know evangelism is the declaration of the good news, declaring, sharing the good news. Now in that moment, could you say, Hey, he evangelized? No, but what you what he did was he witness? What, what do you think about that nuance right there? No, I think that's great. I think that's part of when I say uh, normalizing that, I think yes. that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, yeah, my, I, I don't compartmental. Uh, uh, boy, it's gonna, so, so teenagers listening, like uh, yeah. adults, I think will get this intuitively. Teenagers, I think you can track with me for sure on this because you guys are bright. But, you know, we tend to compartmentalize our, our, our like school life yes. and our church life. You know, and by compartmentalized, it's like I'm one way when I'm here and I'm another way when I'm here, you know, and if you're listening and you're not watching, I'm holding up hands on two different sides, uh, (laughs) you know, but uh, uh, if we could take those things and make that to where, no, this is, I I am a, I'm a teenager going to school Mm -hmm. who happens to be a Christian and it impacts my everyday life. So of course, naturally it's going to be a part of my conversation. You know, um, it's going yes. back to that normalization type thing, but that's where the witnessing takes place. Cause they start to mm-hmm. see you living differently, not perfect, yeah. no. uh, not, um, uh, not uh, dent proof. Like you, your life, you're <laughs> yeah. impacted. You get in fights with your parents. Still, I get, you know, you still, yeah. I still get my wife and I have little spats here, you know, yeah. like, we, you yeah. know, and all that, but, but still at the, center of all of that for me is Jesus. Like my whole life is built on that Mm. grace that he's given me. Uh, And Mm. so that's the witness part. And I think you're right though. There does need to be a challenge though to recognize, man, maybe you do have a friend that's going through a lot and they're seeing you do these things. But at some point though, you have to broach that subject of what it actually means to know Christ though, you know, Mm -hmm. and that could be a part of you, even your, you know, it's a big church word here, but testimony, you know, your story. That's all I yeah. did earlier was give my testimony. You know, I started, yeah, that's it. you know, divorced that's family, it. invited, understood what it meant to follow Jesus, you know, uh, and yeah. all that builds up. Man, if we could get students to understand, man, that's huge, you know. 
that's huge. that's massive right and yeah. that's what the lord used uh, you know the woman at the well right she goes home shares a story a testimony and right. all these people trust jesus just because of her story and i would say right. that man when your story is about jesus uh it's powerful right because our story is his story and uh um, yes. and and so i would just say this too if, if you're if you're watching or, or listening here and you're like man i wish i knew a way to share the gospel and you don't know we've got resources available for you at one million cent.com check that out they're absolutely free um, by the way if you are a student leader and maybe you're a volunteer who you work a whole nother full-time job and every wednesday night you're coming in going oh man what am i going to do listen we have it broken down into six sessions so we can cover six wednesday nights for you for free leverage it use it train your students on how to share the gospel because here's what I found out, Chris, and you found this, I know, true. Hey, when, when we're prepared, the opportunities seem to come up more, right? Yes. <laughs> when, yeah. I, when I'm yeah. ready, it's like, oh, oh, whoa, this person, I can tell about Jesus. And so get yeah. ready. But speaking about volunteers, Chris, will you take just a little bit, share the heart behind the podcast you do, how people can find it. We'll obviously drop links in the show notes and stuff, but tell us a little bit about this because I I love this and I'm not even kidding, man. It's not because you're on here. I'm not, I'm not trying to gas you up or anything, man. Like I, I love the that. fact that somebody realized, hey, we need to equip volunteers. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we do a podcast called the Youth Ministry Podcast for Volunteers. But what that what that comes out of for me, and maybe you, do you have show notes? You could probably drop it in your show notes yeah. page. Or yeah, man, yeah. we sure will. Um, but uh, yeah, so that came out of. A, I mean, you're talking to a guy here that have I've been in youth ministry a long time, doing youth ministry. I've been in small churches. I've been in really gigantic churches as well. Mm -hmm. But what I will tell you, man, as a youth pastor, is it's only because of the volunteers that I've been That's able right. to do the type of things I've been able to do. Um, yeah. And so volunteers listening, that's, man, what you're doing is huge. So keep up the great yeah. work. I know sometimes it doesn't feel like that, uh, yeah. but I promise you it's going to make a difference. Those seeds are being planted. And teenagers, if you're listening, I know we got a bunch of teenagers. Listen, listen. That's right. Every once in a while, just thank your volunteers. <laughs> Take them a candy bar or something. That's Let them right, know they're man. making a difference for you. You know what I'm saying? Come like, on. Let's go. Dude. You know, give them a little, give That's them a little right. teacher's prize or whatever, you know. That's right. Drop uh, a little five dollar Starbucks to, card. <laughs> that and pay attention to your small group. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, come on, man. Okay. That's anyway, right. you're welcome, love volunteers. That. But that said, all that, that led up to me. I've been a part of some other podcasts in the past. I was uh, you know, uh, I think it's a great platform, great uh, resource. But what yeah. it occurred to me was that I there are a lot of youth ministry podcasts that are broad but not many that are narrow. Honestly, it's one of the things I'm loving about what you're doing, Ryan, is yeah, this is yeah. a podcast. You're staying focused on the same topic. Yeah. Teenagers sharing the gospel, people sharing yeah. the gospel, right? Yeah. Um, yep. So, so really that's what we did with the youth ministry podcast for volunteers uh, oh. is we just said, Hey, there aren't a lot of podcasts, if any, that only focus on volunteers. So we keep them all short. They're like 15 to 20 minutes long. We're doing topics like how to take prayer requests without it taking too long. Uh, we're about to record one today. We've actually. all been there. <laughs> yeah. It'll come out like, uh, we're about to record one today, uh, that is titled how to get that kid that talks too much to be quiet. You know, right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Like who doesn't Glory. have that kid though? Come on, yes. man. You know, so how to follow up yeah. with teenagers, all these, how to make your, your group feel welcoming, all of these little yeah. small nuggets. Uh, oh. I've got a, I've got a, a gal by the name of Jennifer. She, she joins me every uh, time when we get one of our reps on, she's a full-time vol I mean, she volunteers. So she's that. got that perspective, you know, and uh, brings yeah. that female perspective. That's so important as well. Yeah. That's yeah. the heart of it, man. So if you're a volunteer, so we'd love good. to have you join us, man. So and good. Uh, thanks for letting me plug them. I appreciate it. Dude, man. So, no, I love it. And we will drop the uh, link to that in yeah, the show notes. Great. And uh, I'm, I've listened to them and they're, they're awesome. I'm not a volunteer. Well, actually I am a volunteer. I help with our students on Wednesday nights at times. And so, uh, man, I'm so thankful for that. And uh, I, I watch them. I watch our leaders, these adults who come in from these college students who come in from a full day's work, a full day of classes, and they pour out on Wednesday nights with these students and crew and um, man just giving them some food giving them some yeah. nuggets man i i'm so thankful for this so y'all check that out go subscribe follow what they're doing and uh, man i am just so incredibly thankful for our time today i know everybody um who's listened or watched has been blessed but um but I, but i want to come back i want to come back to this really important question and um the one we the one we kind of left everybody hanging on chris and it's just the question that we've got to, got to answer before we get off here. And that is this, is 
Chris Trent. Is he a dog guy or a cat guy? Go ahead. Let the world know. Man, I am all in on dogs. Like <laughs> I've got, I've got a dog. I've got, I've had dogs a lot, you know, I'm a dog yeah. guy. Like all I, right. I wanted to jokingly say like, I'm a man. So I like dogs, but I didn't want to rip on any cat guys out there, you know, <laughs> that's right. Uh, yeah, that's just kind right. of keep yeah. that to yourself. If you are a cat, that's, but that's, that's it. Right. Yeah. Uh, man, I love, I love my dog. Uh, honestly though, you know, if, if you saw my dog, uh, I wish I could call her in here real quick, but, uh, cause I'm doing this wrong, but, uh, she's a little mouthy poo, you know, so <laughs> it's not a dog. It's barely a dog. You know what I'm saying? It's like, barely, but it's a dog. That's a cat dog. It's a cat dog. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so yeah, man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So, uh, but, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I love don't it. Don't let my wife know how much I love that dog, man. It's, I, it's I will, isn't it amazing though. Honestly, yeah, if you like animals, yeah. you know, what a blessing yeah. God gave us with animals. I mean, I, yeah. and I'm not trying to over spiritualize that thing, but if you have a pet, yeah. Just yeah. think of the comfort of that. I mean, it's really pretty awesome, you know. So, That's uh, it's it's pretty yeah, pretty cool. God's creation, man, is 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 awesome. It's good well, stuff, dude. Uh, again, man, thank you so much for being on here. Thank no, you, I'm man. This for is awesome. you. Can't wait to catch up again sometime. And for everybody who was watching today or listening in, I just want to say thanks. And if you would do us a massive favor, if you would leave a comment, if you would give us a rating or share this out with other people, every time you do, it helps us continue to reach more and more people. Just like sharing Jesus, God is giving you a realm of influence. Hey, sharing this podcast gives us a new realm of influence to equip them to tell their world about Jesus. Together, we will continue to reach a generation endangered. But don't forget, today, today is a great day to tell someone about Jesus. So let's go.